when I'm shopping for a car online, what goes into the price that I see on a dealer's website? When you see a price on a dealer's website, and this is, this is by rule of the manufacturer and in some cases the state, um, what you're seeing is called the manufacturer suggested retail price or the MSRP. Um, the slang word is sticker price, if you will. Um, so that's really all that, that's what we're required to show online or advertise. And, um, and anything below that um, comes to pass as a result of a negotiation process or, or a proposal or an email, but it's private, it's individualized. So if MSRP is the, the price that you're supposed to be listing online, why when I go to five different websites do I see five different prices on the same car? Well, we are allowed to, um, but the manufacturer allows us to, to, to show a discounted price, but only to a certain point. Okay. They, they don't allow us to go as far as we could potentially go. Um, and so that's maybe what you're seeing. Okay, so if you, if I come into the store as a customer and ask to see the invoice, what are the specifics on the invoice that you're going to show me that go into the price? Well, I just have to have one here as an example. And um, essentially what, what this shows is what we've paid for the car. Um, it'll show the MSRP, the manufacturer's suggested retail price, including all the shipping charges that Honda charges us to get the car here to Boulder. Um, but then it also shows what's called the invoice amount, which is technically the car we, the, the price we pay for it. And it also shows what's called the holdback amount, which is the amount of, I guess, reward that, that Honda pays us um, as, as profit. And so if I want to negotiate the price listed on the invoice, or listed on the website, where are you finding the extra money? And can I go below invoice? Yeah, exactly. That the when you go below invoice, what you're doing is the dealer is essentially giving you the customer a portion or all of the holdback amount, which is the actual profit that we make. And so there are times when a dealership doesn't make a profit on a new car sale. Absolutely, Not most of the time. Yeah. Why, when you're putting either an invoice in front of me or a price online, why can't you include sales tax into that? That's a that's a really good question, and it's. And from what I know, it's unique to Colorado. Apparently, we have a, a very strange setup here in the state uh, in that um, from one block to the next, you can potentially pay a different tax. I think the reason we don't, for, we don't uh, publicize it, though, is because we don't charge taxes based on where we're located. We're charged taxes based on where the customer lives or where they will register a vehicle. Um, and as I said, in every, every little community, in every section of every county, in unincorporated areas, it's all a different number. So three people could live in the same city and pay a different sales Absolutely, tax. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Why do you as a dealer want to sell me a car with little or no profit? Don't be, don't be mistaken. We'd love to make a profit on new cars. But why would we do it is a great question. When you buy a car from me at any price, the chances are much higher that you're going to service it here and if we've done our job right you're going to remain a loyal customer and you're going to refer people to us. If I just boldly sit back and say no I'm not going to sell you a car at zero profit when everyone else in Denver let's say is perfectly prepared to do so mm -hmm. then I never have any of those opportunities in the future. So we view this as an opportunity to build our, our loyal customer base um, potentially your children come buy cars from us, your friends, uh, all of that sort of builds this um, wonderfully successful dealership that we have here. Um, so if I can just get away with selling you the car and not lose any money, then you know we have this opportunity to, to, to work with you in the future. If once I've seen the price online and talked to you on the phone or whatever and I've gotten a price that I'm going to pay for the car. And then I come in and sit down to do the paperwork. What are the additional things that are going to go into that initial price when I'm done with everything? Um, well, you're going to pay obviously the price that we've negotiated mm -hmm. um, or just the price that I've proposed. You know, That's the way we're doing it a lot now. You, do, you ask for a price from us and we give you the best number we know uh, from our research in the market as to where you know, we need to be um, to be competitive. And when you get that best number, 
Is that the final number, or is there more that goes into that? There's always the tax thing, which okay. we just talked about. So that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. If um, uh, let's say you live in Boulder, well, the the tax rate is 8.36 percent. So that's added on, mm -hmm. and that can be a, a pretty big sum of money mm -hmm. uh, in the thousands. Um, then there are also various fees depending on what, how you acquire the vehicle. If you just pay cash, then it's just tax and what's called a dealer handling fee. If you finance the vehicle, there are those two components plus um, some financing costs, uh, fees to the state to record the lien and so forth. If you lease a car, there's an acquisition fee to the bank that you pay. So it all, it all works in, in, in different ways. It just depends on how you buy the car. And so you mentioned a delivery and handling fee. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? The delivery and handling fee is, is something that um, Colorado dealers, for the most part, I don't know nationally if it's been adopted. Um, but essentially what the dealer handling fee does is it gives us the money we need to do all of the title work, the paperwork, everything that the government requires, the temporary tag, and but it also helps us with you know fuel costs, lot expenses, it just it's a catch-all for a lot of things, but it also gives us uh, just a, a little extra contribution to the um, to the profitability of a car. So if I'm selling a vehicle at true zero profit to us, a portion of that dealer handling fee is in effect being given back to the customer. And that's what pays you and your salespeople. That's what keeps the lights on. Right. <laughs> yeah. So after I've seen my price online and I've talked to your salesperson about the price you can offer me, if I come in and I want to see the invoice to make sure I'm getting a fair deal, are you going to show me that invoice? Oh, we'd love to. Yeah, the, the way we work here at Fisher Honda is we want to provide you all the information you need to make a sound decision. We like to take all the anxiety and all the fear out of this process. There, there are so many, everyone's got a, a, a bad story about a dealership experience. We work really, really hard to make that not happen here. Um, and, and if you want to see the invoice, you're absolutely, in fact, with the Costco program, for example, that's part of the requirement. You're entitled to see that information. Um, the fact that they would, you know, sort of force dealers to do that is kind of a mystery to us because we would anyway. Um, we want you to know exactly what you're paying for. Okay. So if I'm able to get a price from you and my local dealer that may be 20 miles from Boulder, why would I want to drive those 20 miles to come here to buy the car? Because your experience will just be so much better. Um, we pride ourselves on a very personal approach to our business. Uh, the fact that the, the, the company has been family owned for 45 years, Craig Fisher's office is right down the way. He'll want to know you, he'll want to meet you, he'll want to know everything about you. Um, whereas that dealer in your neighborhood is more likely to be some corporate owner. Um, you know, if you need something from us, all the decisions are made here. The checks are written here. Everything happens right here. And I think because of that, and because of the culture that we have, if you look across the sales staff, the management in the various departments, you see a, a huge longevity. Um, the body shop manager, for instance, has been with us for 22 years. Uh, my boss, the general sales manager, has been here for 23 years. Um, the parts manager has been here for over 20 years. Tyler, who runs the Honda service department, I mean, these are all long-term committed employees. And I have to believe that if you're going to stick around somewhere for 20 years and you have any kind of an ethical background, then you're doing all the right things all the time for all the customers. You know, we're human beings, we obviously make mistakes, but if you go and, and type our name into Google, um, you're going to see hundreds and hundreds of testimonials um, about how we treat our customers. And back to what we were talking about earlier, we know that this is a high anxiety. If I read somewhere that uh, buying a car is like getting your tooth pulled or something like that. It's yeah. right down there, like with going to the dentist. The last thing you want to Almost do. as, yeah. So we know that. And we're going to do everything we can to make the experience a positive one. Um, the state and all the requirements make it very difficult in terms of all the paperwork and the detail. But again, you know, when you have people with the level of experience, the knowledge that we do here, um, 
And we're not going to make those mistakes where, where we know how to get you through the process and we're going to make it as transparent and as easy as, as it possibly can be. So you mentioned that it's going to be a great experience here at Fisher Honda. Tell me about why the experience is good if I come here for sales. Sure. Well, let's just start from the arrival. You know, you walk in, we have a, a very pleasant lady coordinating um, the, the traffic in and out of the showroom. You'll immediately be assigned to a salesperson who has years and years of experience and knowledge about the Honda product. Um, that's not to say that he's going to barrage you or she will you know, bury you in, in, in detail, but know that your questions will be answered and they'll be answered accurately. Um, you'll be presented the car, you, you will, we'll talk to you a little bit about what your needs are so that we're not just throwing something at you. Um, then the next step of course is to experience the vehicle. So. We like to take a real hands-off approach here. If you'd like us to come along, that's great. We can ride along and answer questions as we go. But a lot of our customers just want to get out there with their, with their partners and, and really absorb the experience and talk, it, talk about it honestly with themselves. So we have absolutely no problem with you just taking the car for as long as you need it. Um, it's, it's also a standing offer, too. If uh, you want to just take it home for the night, put it in your garage, make sure it fits, we have no problem with that either. Um, so, you know, that's the sales experience. Mm -hmm. Again, it's lots of knowledge. We take it at your pace. You know, we're not going to, we're not a dealership that's going to, you know, hammer you. As a sales manager, you're not going to see me coming out and trying to, trying to beat you up to make you buy the car right now. Right. Believe me, I want you to, but um, that's just not how we roll here. You know, we're just, we're laid back, it's bolder, and, and we try to be, uh, we try to be as comfortable as we can for you.